Welcome back and in this lesson we're going to show you how you can debug your JavaScript. So when you're writing code and I'm actually going to get rid of some of this content here I'm going to get rid of this one as well and we're just going to focus on that script.js file. So we've got our console log here and we see when we go out to our web page we refresh that page we see that that gets rendered out. So we can use the console to pass messages between our code and out to the console. And this is going to become more important as you've got a whole bunch more script happening here. Maybe you have some functions and you've got some variables and we are going to be covering all of this coming up. But if you do have these values and you need to take a quick look at them or a quick peek at, at them and you're not necessarily rendering them out visibly here within the browser, that's where you, you'd, you'd use the console and you'd be able to see information such as that uh, maybe which line of code it is and this really does help you debug your code. So getting that output and having the ability to output it within the console within a non-visible area allows you to render that code out without interfering with the way that application is being presented to the users. So another useful function in JavaScript is when you're debugging and maybe not as much when you're actually doing the debugging but when you're writing the code and that's to write out comments. So comments are really helpful and uh, if for instance uh, you're sharing your code or if you're coming back to your code a few months down the line then you might not know why this syntax was here. So this console log hello3, it might not make sense within the rest of your code initially. So this is where you add in those comments to help guide that information. So this was demo for output of JavaScript. And that's essentially my comment. So two slashes there. And you can see that the editor is kind of graying it out there and really it's not going to affect any of the output of the code and this is mainly for developers to be able to take a closer look at your source code and get some additional meaning out of the various statements and you can do this as well for variables and so on so you can get past a lot of information uh, that can be utilized at later points as well as with collaboration so another way to add in comments and this is another useful way for debugging. So let's say for instance you've written this out a whole bunch of times and you want to run some tests or want to debug your code and you don't want your code to perhaps render out this many times as uh, maybe you want to de debug one part of it. So you want to have a quick way to kind of comment out your code so that it doesn't render out. So maybe we want to comment out all of these five middle ones so that's where we use the asterisk slash and then to end that commenting we use the asterisk slash again and we can see that the editor is graying these out and basically all that means is that it's not going to be rendering out that code so this is all commented this is all commented and this is only for reading for developers or collaborators so nothing gets rendered out at this point and there's also another way to debug your code within JavaScript. So if you do have some script running or if you want to do some outputs here, you can do things like 5 plus 5. And you see that uh, the callback now, we see that the browser is actually returning values. So essentially, this can be placed in within JavaScript and we can get that same functionality. So we can do 5 plus 5 and have the browser do some math for us. And we see that we get the solution there. So that really, uh, it's the same thing that uh, we type in content here, or if we type in five, or if we type in hello, uh, we see that the browser returns back some information. So it returns back the callback information. So it takes this as an intake input and returns back something uh, using that information that was input. So we can do other things like hello and we can add it to world and we see that 
on the return, JavaScript simply adds them together and provides us the return. So just as we were doing the math up here, we see that JavaScript also has the ability to combine some text there, some string values, and return those. And by typing directly within the console here, and there's a way to clear that out as well, so you can do clear. Uh, which clears out the console. So, so there is some functionality here as well to, uh, to clear out the console and so on. Uh, but essentially, this gives you the ability to interact with your JavaScript that's rendered within the page and, uh, and basically interact with it uh, within the console. And we are going to be working more with this as we progress through the course. Welcome back, and in this lesson, we're gonna look at three basic types of data types that are used commonly in JavaScript. So there's strings, which essentially is a sequence of characters, like hello world. There's uh, numbers, which are numeric values, so they can be any numeric value. And then there's booleans, which can be either true or false. And we briefly saw them in use when we were looking at our console, where we saw that if we had a string value, uh, it would return back the result that it saw. So it saw that this was a string. We also saw how we can combine them together and so on. And with these string values, you can also hold them with the single quote. And if you do something like this, then it's gonna give you an error. And that basically means that it's actually looking for a defined variable value for hello. Uh, so it doesn't understand that this is actually a string that you're trying to put through. Uh, because in JavaScript, all the spaces and how you use the quotes is extremely important. So all you have to remember though with strings is that we're quoting around them. Because strings can have a number of spaces, it can have a number of additional options within it and you can break in and out of these strings uh, by uh, breaking in and out of the quotes. So we see that this particular one has a lot of space there and when we press enter we see that it gets returned with that same spacing. So this is really important and the, the, the quotes around it essentially help it all uh, be contained together within one value and also if you're probably wondering if we have a string value and we do something like hello worlds, uh, we see that it's actually breaking out of the string and this one's gonna throw an error as well. Uh, that's because we broke out of the string. So if we are using single quotes, then we need to do this backslash here and that keeps the string from breaking out of uh, using the quote to break out of the string value. And we see that when we refresh it, we get a return on hello worlds uh, without that slash. So that's the way to add in these, uh, these special characters such as quotes into your string value and see it propagate. And you can also do it within uh, combining multiple ones. So if we have double quotes, around the main string, we can use single quotes inside of it and it's not gonna break out of it. So that's an important thing to remember when you are writing your strings. So the next thing was numeric values. And we see that numbers can be 0 0.5, they can be decimal places, they can be very large numbers, uh, they can also be very small numbers, and these are all numbers. So unlike some other programming languages, JavaScript doesn't distinguish uh, as long as it's numeric, it's a number, and it can be a decimal place, it can also be negative number, and it simply just returns back that number. Uh, and then lastly, we have true, uh, we have false, and we have true. Uh, so basically, false gets returned back as false, true gets returned back as true, and you're gonna see the value of these uh, in the upcoming lessons as we do some conditions and as we do comparisons between different values. Uh, so for now, uh, we just need to remember that we can return back uh, Booleans which are true or false and essentially there's just the two different states for Booleans.